Good morning, good morning, good morning. I pray you all received sweet sleep last night, woke up with bells and whistles on and ready to take on this day, a day we've never seen before, a day we will never ever see again. But it is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Gathering of Hearts on this morning. I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka I am the heart gatherer. And this morning, your daily dosage, it's a continuation of what we've been talking about. Integrity, what's in your wallet, part three. Integrity, What's in your wallet part three? And so today we're going to get started talking about ways for living a life of integrity, ways for living a life for, of integrity. You know, we've been talking about integrity, which has given us an opportunity to just kind of look over our lives and see, hey, where do I measure up here? Is this a place I need to grow? Is this a place I need to mature in? And so today we're going to go over ways for living a life of integrity integrity. And the first thing is this, you have to have a consistent character. You have to have a consistent character. You can't be um, Dr. Jekyll and then Mr. Hyde the next day. You know, when people don't know who to expect when they see you, is, is she going to flip out today or is she going to be normal? Is he going to be sane or is he going to be insane? You've got to be known one way. And so your character should be consistent. Consistent. People should know I can depend on her. People should know, you know, if she said it, she's going to do it. People should know she's calm mannered. You know, she's not going to flip out. See, when I live a life um, of integrity, it means that I'm living with an inner sense of wholeness, an inner sense of stability, which is important, and an in inner um, sense of balance. Um, living where others know what to expect from you. Um, living because they, they, they've um, experienced you in different situations. So they know that you can handle adversity. They know that you can handle criticism without flipping out. First Chronicles 29, 17, and I'm reading that in the New Living Translation. It says this, it says, I know Oh my God, that you examine our hearts and rejoice when you find integrity there. You know, I have done all this with good motives. So you know how you have some people, they do things, but there's a motive behind it. It's not really coming from their heart. It's to bring attention to themselves. It's to advance themselves. You know, it's to bring validation. They want some type, they're seeking some type of attention. So it's not coming um, from the heart, but it's, it's a motive behind it. And so we've got to always make sure, you know, that we have a life of integrity. Good morning, that we are living um, a life of integrity. Um, when you live a life of integrity, you never have to spend time questioning yourself. You, you're, you've you gained the trust of your leaders. You've gained the trust of people around you. And so the first thing, when we look at ways of living a life of integrity, we want to make sure that we have a consistent character. That's right, Heartbeat Rainey, doing things without a motive. So the second thing in living a life of integrity is number two, be honest. Yes, be honest. I'm sure you all knew that one was coming. Ephesians 4.29 says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearer. And so, you know, I've been told that I'm sometimes too honest to a fault, too direct, but I I don't believe in leaving room to guests. I believe that you, you know, you should tell people the truth. I want people to know exactly where I'm coming from. I don't want to have a conversation and you walk away with a gray area. Does she mean this or does she mean that? No, I believe in telling the truth. When I tell you the truth, now you can grow from that. Now, of course, we're going to tell the truth in love, but I'm going to give it to you straight so that there are no gray areas. So here's the thing. In honesty, if I take the time to explain, it means I care. If I've gone silent, mm, 
<clears throat> so listen, honesty requires intentionality and it requires thought, which means I've got to think about the implications of what I'm about to do, what I'm about to speak. I've got to count the cost. I've got to make sure that this is being purposeful. So think about this. If I don't have integrity and I'm not being honest, now I've got to think about the implications that are going to come behind me not being honest. I've got to think about not only how it affects me, but how it affects the person or people that I'm not being honest with. And so this is why it is important to live a life of integrity and be honest. Do you understand that when we are not honest, you've got to have a great memory because you've got to remember what you said. But if you tell the truth, if you are honest, then you don't have to remember what you said because you're just speaking what was already done. And so again, you've got to be intentional about this thing, about being honest. Again, counting the cost of this thing. If I'm not honest, if I don't represent that I have integrity, what is the cost? of this? How is this going to come back as grandma would say and bite me later? How is this going to affect my future? Number three, You've got to admit when you've made a mistake and move on. This is the life of one that has integrity. I was wrong. I should not have done that or I made a mistake. I don't know what was going on or I didn't handle that correctly, but then move on. Don't continue to live in the past. When you continue to stay in the past, you cannot enjoy the present, which means you're not ready for the future. And so you've got to learn how to admit when you've made a mistake. There are no perfect people. We all make mistakes. But the thing is, make a mistake and move on, which actually goes back to number two of being honest. Be honest about what happened. You you know, tell a little something, something, whatever it is, just deal with it and then move on. Being honest also means this. When I'm honest, I'm being honest with humility. And that's how I'm able to admit that I made a mistake because I'm not thinking more highly of myself than I should, but I'm being humble saying, listen, I'm just a mere woman. I'm just a mere man. I make mistakes. Here's what happened. Now I'm trying to correct that thing. Work with me. Be patient with me. Help me in this thing. But do it from your heart. Not because, you know, there's a motive behind it. Proverbs 23, 18, and I'm reading it out of the Common English Bible. It says this, those who hide their sin or their mistakes won't succeed. But those who confess their sin and their mistakes, give them up and they receive mercy. That's right, Harbidi Vaughn. Honesty is the best policy. Honesty is the best policy. It's always better to tell the truth, even if it hurts. I can deal with the truth and get over the hurt versus you lying to me and not um, valuing me enough to tell the truth. I can get over, you know, a lie. I can't deal with a lie. I'm just going to be straight up honest with you. Don't lie because mm, that makes it worse. But let me get back over here. Um, it says those who hide their sin or their mistakes won't succeed, but those who confess and give them up will receive mercy. So when I'm able to tell the truth, when I'm able to admit my mistakes, the Bible says it is in that that I will receive mercy. But when I lie, when I fudge the narrative, it says then that those who I'm not going to succeed, I'm not going to prosper any. And so when you can't move on, let me see if I can break this down in a few time few minutes I have left when you can't move on it's because you're searching for something from your inner core. You're looking for validation. You're looking for worthiness. And that's why you want to stay stuck in the past because you're looking for something that you did not receive earlier on in your life. But here's the problem. You're looking for it from the person that you're dealing with who had nothing to do with whatever it is that you're holding. So most times that validation, that unfeeling of that feeling of um, unworthiness um, that you didn't get from either a parent or or from a spouse. So when you make a mistake, it takes you all the way back there, 
all the way back to 1999. It takes you all the way back to 2005. And you live in that thing as if it just happened. You begin to um, communicate with others, with the person that, whoever did that to you in 99, in 2005. And so what happens is it takes you back to that initial injury. And so now what are you doing? You're opening up the wound again, but the person that's in your present is the one that's catching it. The one that did it to you is long gone, never even thought about it again. And you're the only one that's living in that past. And so the new person that is in your life is the one that's catching the um, all of the feelings that you have towards the old. Are you hearing me on this morning? And so what's happening is you're living a double life. You're living in the past and you're trying to live in the present, but you'll never make it to the future because you're holding on to the past and you can't even enjoy where you are. And so here is where that no integrity, you feel one way in your heart. Here's where the, let me, let me slow down. Here is where the no integrity part comes into play because you feel one way in your heart, but your actions are totally different. So you're not even being honest with yourself. You're playing a role with yourself. Let me put on this persona that I feel like this, but in my heart, I really feel like that. And so there's no integrity. You're not even being true to yourself, which means you can't be true to others. I'm going to say that again. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because that was good right there. You can't even be true to yourself, which means you cannot be true to others. So we've got to learn how to be honest. We've got to admit the mistakes that we made, and then we've got to do it without going back 20 years ago. We've got to admit the mistake that we made, and then we've got to move on. And so here's the thing. you This means that you've got to watch your thoughts because your thoughts become your words. You see, when you think on that thing too long, you respond from that injured place and people don't know what the heck you're talking about because they weren't there. You're the only one who was traveled back in time. Everybody else is living in the present, making their way to the future, their divine destiny. And so you've got to watch your thoughts because those thoughts, they become your words. You've got to watch those words because those words become your actions. You start speaking a thing and you release it into the atmosphere. And once it's out there, it's out there. See, it's a spiritual law that you have what you say. So you start speaking crazy from that injured place. And guess what? You have exactly what you say. So watch your words because they become your actions. Now you start acting like that wounded person. You start acting like the injury is fresh. So now I watch my actions because my actions become my head. I go back to that injured place and I start acting like that injured person. Now the ha the good habits that I had, they're gone. Why? Because it goes all the way back to my thoughts. I started with a crazy thought. That crazy thought became my words. The I released the word. The word became my action. The action then became my habits. And then you've got to watch your habits because it changes your character. Number one, remember was, have a consistent character where people know who you are. They respect who you are. Don't have that character where everybody thinks that you're crazy. Don't have that character where people are like, oh God, here she comes. Don't be that person. Take this word, apply it to your life, and then change. And then you've got to watch your character because your character becomes your destiny. If you continue to be the injured, the wounded, the broken person, that is who you are and that is the destiny that you will live. Where well, it is the year of 2024 and it is the year of the divine destiny your divine destiny. So don't get caught up in the past where you don't live the destiny that is marked for this appointed time for this year. And so now you've got to do the right thing. Do the right thing. This integrity thing even when no one else is watching. Do the right thing. Hey listen, I'm going to stop right there because I'm running out of time. Thank you Harpy Sherry for the stars. Truly appreciate your support. I'm going to stop right there because I'm running out of time. You know we're going to pick it up tomorrow. But that is 
is the daily dosage for today. Integrity. What's in your wallet? Part three. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do so because there you'll find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms. God wants me whole. Visit the website. God wants me whole.org. Come on. You know how we do this thing. Let's say it together. Say God wants me whole. And I am. Again, I'm Regina Banks, your GPS, the wholeness, aka I am the heart gatherer. I love you guys a bunch. Go out there, have a spec while amazing day. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. And I'll see you right back here tomorrow morning as we continue on in integrity. What's in your wallet? <laughs>